With the release of the second episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a new character called the Power Broker was mentioned briefly by some of the Flag Smashers. Marvel comic fans will know that this mysterious individual plays a large role, especially in the life of John Walker, who has just taken up the mantle of Captain America. But for the many who don't know, who is the Power Broker? Well, the first to take on the mantle and alias of the Power Broker was Curtis Jackson. Curtis was introduced in Marvel Comics as the leader in a criminal organization known simply as The Corporation. Later, he would take his talents and leadership skills to found a company known as Power Broker Incorporated. The purpose of Power Broker Incorporated was to attempt to recreate Super Soldier Serum to sell to those who are willing to pay the high price for superhuman strength and peak human potential. Super Soldier Serum is of course most well known for Steve Rogers' transformation into the original Captain America. After Curtis Jackson founded Power Broker Incorporated, he teamed up with Dr. Carl Malice, a scientist who had previously done experiments on superhuman individuals. With their combined efforts, Power Broker Incorporated was able to use their technology to augment those who were willing to pay for their procedure. Despite the high price for augmentations, the experiments did not always see perfect results. The process was risky and often left the subjects with deformities or even brought them death. To keep the upper hand on their test subjects, Dr. Malice and the Power Broker would use an addictive drug to keep their subjects under their hand to use for their own well-being. Two of the Power Broker's most well-known subjects were John Walker, the US agent, and Lamar Hoskins, who is known as Battlestar. As Power Broker Incorporated started to make a name for itself, an attempt was made to take it down by the Scourge of the Underworld organization, and in desperation, Curtis began to augment himself. This procedure left him crippled and deformed. He was even unable to move without the help of the powerful exoskeleton suit. However, he did gain superhuman strength and durability. Eventually, Jackson's death came at the hand of the Punisher, but the mantle of Power Broker would still live on as another rose to lead Power Broker Incorporated. However, much less is known about him. This Power Broker still augmented others, but at the price of a large percentage of their earnings with their new powers. This Power Broker also gave himself powers including the ability to generate energy from the palms of his hands and flight. With the Power Broker now being brought into the MCU through the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show, there are a lot of new stories and possibilities for this live-action version of the Power Broker. Let us know what kind of role you think he will play and what effect he will have on the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward.